Hi, good evening. So I am the last man standing between you and uh, uh, and it, uh, and your evening. Right. So no, there is a word of thanks. So I am okay. Um, okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for staying uh, for this session. I know it's the last one today, uh, and nobody wants to get stuck in the traffic here. Um, so let's start with uh, with a quick poll. Uh, do any of you get those uh, pesky text messages pestering you to pay your credit card or other bills when you have already paid uh, last week, let's say? Do you get them? I, I get them too quite often, right? And they often have a disclaimer saying, uh, please ignore if already paid. Right? Now, I often wonder, why do you need to have a disclaimer in place if your omni-channel or uh, multi-channel strategies are in place, right? So this shows there is a disconnect between, uh, let's say, their messaging platform and uh, their platform that has my payment information, right? The two systems are not in sync or are not integrated, at least not in real time, right? So this is what we'll cover today then. Um, we'll talk about uh, uh, these omni-channel experiences, what's wrong with them. Uh, we'll take a look at some examples and so on. Uh, we'll then look at uh, how stack architectures have evolved and what is it that we need to do in the new decade to be able to address these omni-channel experiences. Uh, we'll look at both, uh, bo both uh, the old stack and how it is evolving uh, for the new decade. We'll look at some of the foundation services that are important as we get into 2020s and, and modernize our stacks. And then we'll, we'll summarize this. Okay. So the basic premise that I am taking today is that uh, omni-channel experience is, is broken, especially in India. Uh, let, let's, let's look at an example. So last week, uh, I, I, I ordered a number of items on a leading retailer's craft website. And those orders, the items were supposed to be picked up from the store. So when I went to the store in the evening to pick up those items, 50% of them were already out of stock. And mind you, I had already paid in advance and it had shown me that those items are in stock. There are several examples. Uh, another time I placed an order for a demand draft or a banker's check on a bank's website to be picked up from my nearest physical branch. But when I went to the branch, they had absolutely no idea. I'm sure you have uh, your own fair share of such uh, uh, omni-channel fail stories, right? So text messages with, uh, with, with, with obsolete information or email offers coming in which don't work on website and, and so many of those types of examples, right? So we'll, we'll view some, look at some examples. So this is, uh, this is an email from, from LinkedIn which has uh, a coupon code that gives me a discount of $50. But when I actually apply this coupon code on their website, it says the coupon is already expired. Now, if the coupon is already expired, why send it to me in the first place, right? So, some disconnect in the underlying systems. Another example, so I get an email with, the, with, with, an, uh, with a price of a mobile phone, but when I actually click on it, the price is completely different. Now, you could argue that by the time I clicked on, clicked on the price, that offer was already gone. Right? But what explains this? Another example from their competitor. Right? So here you will notice that uh, while the price has changed, the MRP has also changed. And in India, you know that the MRP cannot change. Right? So the product is same, the seller is same, but the MRP is different. Right? So another thing that points to different underlying systems. Right? So content varies across these systems. Now it's not just the content that varies across these systems, it's also the rules that define how that content is uh, exposed, right? So these are the rules such as personalization rules that define uh, what content to be displayed to whom, right? So it, it, often organizations have multiple setups, multiple systems, and they end up having rules in each of those systems, right? So in this case, you see a web, web, web experience management platform with a set of personalization rules, and another email marketing platform with its own set of personalization rules. And those personalization rules are usually separate and there is no easy way to standardize or align, align them. 
uh, in addition customers have often have multiple identities right so for example in this case the left hand side screenshot shows the retailers uh, ordering uh, retailers uh, website with my profile information and on the right hand side is their facebook page with my information and you will notice that uh, i provide different email ids or different profile identifiers uh, to this brand and there is no easy way or no trivial way to actually map both those two ids to a single user profile and these are just two channels imagine what happens if there are uh, like 10 channels or 15 channels right this prog problem becomes even more complex right so while we intuitively understand the issues behind these uh, these problems you know we have seen con different content different systems not in sync and so on but let's look at a tech uh, stack view of uh, what the issues are right so this slide shows uh, a sort of a stack or a martech stack that a lot of organizations have right similar stacks uh, you know, there is some statistic that says that a typical enterprise often employs about 90 odd platforms. Uh, I think, David, that was your one of your findings, right? So, 90 odd platforms. We will not, we can't have 90 platforms here, but let's take a subset of this for that discussion. And uh, uh, and on the top, you have the engagement channels that uh, you use to interact with your customers. Then you have the interaction and delivery environments. And then you have the engagement and, and content platform, right? Pretty standard type of a stack diagram. Of course, each situation varies, so these boxes might differ, but the idea is similar. Right now, the problem with such stacks is, and these stacks were quite popular in 2010s. A lot of you have invested heavily in such stacks, build expertise, and so on. Right? But the problem with these stacks is that each of these boxes is really a silo in itself or an island in itself. What that means is that each of these boxes have their own content, rules, data, customer data, and so forth. Right? So let's take the example of outbound marketing, for example. Uh, a typical outbound marketing platform or ESP also has uh, some basic capabilities of handling customer data. Right? So they manage lists, lists of customers, lists of contacts, and so on. Uh, they also have their own personalization rules. So, for example, you want to do some A-B testing of your emails or you want to send specific emails to specific people. Uh, you need some personalization engine or some capability for personalization there. Uh, they also have campaign, manage, manage, campaign planning tools, right? So, you, you visually create a campaign and then run that campaign with multiple drip, drip drip steps and so on and so forth and finally some some like some sort of analytic capabilities right so this this shows an example of such a, such a marketing tool i think this is from mailchimp and on the left you will see that all those capabilities are mentioned there uh, slightly more detailed view of that right so you have the email template a busy big email template and then you have a Workflow type interface, visual type interface for creating campaigns, uh, some interface for analytics, uh, and another interface for managing customer lists, right? Now, what is the problem with this, you might ask, right? So the problem is that not just this outbound marketing box, but all other boxes have similar customer content, data, rules, planning, and analytics of their own. So so like I said, each of these boxes is a silo and each silo has its own capabilities, whether they are rudimentary or sophisticated, that's a, that's a different matter. But all of them have some capabilities of content, data, rules, planning and analytics. Right? And because of that, you are unable to do anything that requires cross-application or cross-channel thing. Right? So for example, if you were to use your content in your WCM, to be delivered to, to let's say your e-commerce site or using content in your e-commerce engine with recommendations in your personalization or, or, or something like that, right? Any, anything that requires cross-channel or uh, across channels, across multiple channels, it is non-trivial to do, right? And because of that, oops, these images are not coming. 
right anyway so those were smiley faces and some crying faces so essentially the idea is that because of this issue uh, your customer experience really suffers and is not consistent so you you get some channels where customers are really happy whereas there are other channels where customers are really upset right so that 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 that, that that's the major problem with these kind of stack models right so this is going to be a text heavy slide but this just summarizes all the things that we mentioned uh, that i just described just now so just quickly summarizing this right so the problem with these stacks is that your data is stuck in back office repositories right so each repository has its own set of data and because of that uh, your experience is often inconsistent and not actionable across channels right it's not cross channel or multi channel or omni channel Uh, the second problem is that your content experience and rules are now channel specific right they are platform specific or channel specific so you have separate uh, content delivery rules for your email marketing you have another set of content delivery rules for your website a third set of content delivery rule for your e-commerce and so on right so your content uh, uh, your your rules for content delivery are very platform specific and often get replicated across channels right and therefore your decision logic is now part of individual delivery channel rather than something that needs to be more horizontal and drive all the delivery channels and therefore your customers and prospects don't enjoy a truly integrated and consistent experience their experience is usually disjointed and fragmented and and not no, not not consistent so we have seen these are sort of symptoms that we have seen in consistent engagement Uh, siloed customer and prospect data marketing disconnected from sales and so on and so forth right so the end result is that it is impossible to create consistent customer experiences and a unified uh, approach to engagement across channels with the kind of stacks that we have been working so far work, working with so far right so what do you do you know we have seen the problem but uh, what is the solution to this uh, this sort of a stack problem how do you modernize your your existing stacks right so uh, here's another uh, stack diagram and this is what we call a reference diagram uh, of course reference diagrams are always examples they won't fit in 100% but they sort of give you a starting point right so so what it does is that instead of having a uh, uh, an individual siloed uh, data content rules etc it abstracts all of them into a sort of an enterprise foundation service layer of its own right so you have the, uh, 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 in the bottom you will see this enterprise foundation services layer uh, with three pillars there is content and info data and decisioning so what we have done is that we have ab abstracted all those things like the ones that i mentioned like content like data like rules away from each of those individual channels and into a layer of their own right and uh, what this results is in is that each of those boxes have same access have access to the same data same same content same rules and therefore your customer experience all across all these channels is consist is is constant and uh, and unified and all of that so all those images that you don't see are all bright smiley faces so you can imagine that visualize that right so essentially what this means is that now outbound marketing box like it had its own set of um, uh, data rules etc it no longer has that instead it has this access to this common layer with uh, which has data content and decisioning and so do all of the other boxes right so customer care crm wcm e-commerce etc so all of them have access to same data same content and info and same decisioning and because all of them have access to same underlying assets it's easier to have uh, an omni channel experience that's consistent across channels right so essentially what we have done is we have abstracted all the common things into a layer of its own so so the top layers become light and the bottom layers become heavy in this stack so so what does this mean for your tools such as cms tools which lot of lot of companies use right so what this means is that a lot of lot of logic lot of complex sophisticated logic from your wcm now moves to 
till to the layer below it right so it's now part of this foundation services so that uh, so things like content reuse or things like workflows etc move from top to bottom and and similarly for other capabilities so instead of having customer data lists in your outbound marketing platform you have it in a layer below so products in your top row or top uh, become slightly lighter and the products in the foundation layer becomes become become a little bit heavier right so this is this is an example of uh, how we use this uh, this stack diagram uh, we had a customer council uh, two weeks back where we asked uh, 20 of our customers to put uh, red green blue and yellow dots in the areas that they thought are doing well and and they thought are not doing well and you can see that um, a lot of reds are there in the customer data uh, pillar which is in the middle and there are a lot of blues in the decisioning pillar which me blue stood for uh, an identified need that they want to do but they haven't done it yet so they plan to do that right so those are the two boxes which are really becoming important uh, as we talk more and more of omni channel uh, strategies or omni channel experience right so let's look at these key foundation services uh, we have 4 minutes so let's look at these key foundation services quickly uh, there are three boxes here, there are three pillars here, there is content and info, there is data and there is decisioning. So we can't go into all of them but quickly let's look at uh, some of the most important ones. Uh, the first one is the CDP, uh, I think David already gave an excellent overview of CDP so quickly going through it. This is the traditional CDP model where you have uh, all this data ingestion from first and zero party, second and third party on the left and then you apply data management principles to it meaning you do things like id resolution you do you do data cleaning you do etl data enrichment segmentation and so on and so forth and then you activate that data meaning you send all those segments or cleaned up unified profiles to your downstream marketing systems right so this has been a traditional uh, cdp uh, cdp uh, model where a cdp claimed to be doing all of these activities in the build, mid, middle, right? But of late we are seeing that uh, uh, with second gen CDP implementations, uh, there is some sort of a divide happening there and, and we see that uh, there are two boxes there now and this is the emerging model. So there is a customer data management layer and then a customer data activation layer with, the, with a split of functionality. So, you have ingest, transform, clean, all those data quality management things in the customer data management as, uh, box and then you have the activation pieces in the orange box, right? And typically in large organizations or the enterprise or the complex enterprises, we see that these uh, activities mentioned in the, in the blue box are typically handled as part of data fabric, right? Which is a broader data environment beyond CDP, so your data warehouse, Snowflake, uh, what have you, right? So a lot of organizations, the large ones especially ask us, you know, when we talk about CDP, they say that, look, we are already doing a lot of these activities elsewhere, so why do we want to replicate in CDP? Which is why now CDP vendors are trying to differentiate between management and activation and trying to package their offerings uh, similarly. Right, so again, like David said, a CDP can do a lot of things that are mentioned here. Uh, but what's important for you is to find out what is the scope of CDP for your company, right? So for uh, some CDPs can do first two boxes well, some CDPs can do last two boxes well. Some CDPs would claim that they can do all of these boxes really well. But don't believe those, those vendors, just do your own testing. Uh, after figuring out what is it that you want your CDP to do for you. Okay, the second uh, is the decisioning platform. So what's important here is the things like journey management and journey analytics, so omni-channel journey orchestration. These are the platforms that allow you to visualize and manage customer journeys across multiple channels, multiple touch points, across different times and, and, and so on and so forth. These, uh, these platforms became really popular in 2020s, in late 2020s. But now we are seeing that uh, uh, they, this market is more or less uh, kind of dead. I don't want to use that word, but, but the fact is that most of the vendors have given up on that market. 
and uh, there were several reasons for that but what's happening now is that a, CD, a lot of CDP vendors are starting to pick up that and a lot of CDP vendors have started to offer some bit of journey orchestration capabilities uh, as part of their platforms. 17 seconds, okay. Uh, and then you know content, you already know that, so we'll not cover. Uh, this is our humble MarTech map. These are the vendors that we cover. So if you want to know what are the key vendors in each of those technologies that I, uh, that I talked about, CDPs and, and journey orchestration, etc., these are the vendors that, that we cover. Um, you can go to our website uh, www.realstorygroup.com slash vendor map and download a high resolution uh, version of this, uh, this graphic. So essentially we use uh, some sort of a subway map to describe uh, different uh, technology areas and their intersections uh, tell you a lot. So for example in the middle you will see a lot of crowd which is essentially the suite vendors and, and some people would like you to believe that suites are often a better solution. Again, don't believe them and do your independent testing with these vendors. Okay, so key takeaways, this is what we discussed today. Uh, the main thing about omni-channel is that you need to remove silos of information, silos of data, content, etc. from your stack to be able to do uh, omni-channel, to be able to provide omni-channel experiences. And in order to do that, you need to avoid content experiences and rules that are really platform or channel specific. So don't have anything that is only specific to, let's say, your website. So you can't have personalization rules that work only on website. You need to be able to define your personalization in such a way that it works across channels. And so what that means is that you need to rethink if it makes to have, it makes sense to have all those capabilities at higher level or at the lower foundational level. Right. What we are recommending is that you abstract out all those capabilities and make your top level layer really light, bring it to the level below which is the heavy lifting uh, foundational capabilities. Right. And that's the fourth point. Right. So essentially rethink your stack and make it more customer centric rather than enterprise centric. Right. So that, that's really the key message. Okay. So that's about it. Thank you to all those, all those of you who, who are still here. Uh, I appreciate this. Any questions? If you have one or two. No questions is always good news. So, okay. Yeah. Sir. I don't know honestly, there could be several reasons uh, Reasons there. A lot of people don't give an email ID, that's, that's their primary email ID, right? Because they know that people will, will contact them, right? With cold, cold emails, right? So that, that's one reason. I don't know, other reasons could be that uh, they're genuinely not interested in what you have to offer. So maybe the, the, the match between the profile that you want and that you actually got is, is not a good Good, good fit, so that that person maybe is not a good fit. Could could be several reasons. I honestly don't know a lot about that. Uh, 